for for the blockchain it's, reason. It's a lot easier these days. It it's used easier to be now, but still, it's not that easy. I mean, it's like uh, I mean, I wouldn't say and, I wouldn't say buying it is any harder than buying a stock. Ooh. In fact, well, I wouldn't buy your Bitcoin on Robinhood because they don't let you move it, which is defeats the whole purpose of buying Bitcoin. Yeah, I mistakenly did that back when Robinhood first started introduced. Uh, 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 cryptocurrencies. Yeah, crypto I bought a little bit of Bitcoin on it because I had funds in there and I said, oh, I'll just buy some Bitcoin. And I realized they don't let you move it out of Robinhood like you so can with Coinbase. There. So it's okay. just stuck with them. I was like, what the fuck is the point well, of this? What do you do? You can sell it only? Yeah, by it's yourself. just for, you, can, you trade can trade it, but you can't move it. So you never own your own Bitcoin. That's the whole point of Bitcoin. Well, I mean, you own it on paper because it's the yeah, same thing with the stock. I, I mean, you fuck about owning But if you on own a hundred shares of Disney, you can't really, in theory, move them. You you sell them or you buy them. Or yeah, but it's different. The whole point of Bitcoin right. is that you own your. Uh, Bitcoin. That's my point. So that, so to buy it right to buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, for example, it's no different than Robinhood, which tons of people do already. Right. Or any any other. Broker. But how many it's people leave the, the the Bitcoins on? Or within their Coinbase account, or they move into a wallet. Um, I would say the majority of people who it depends who. So people who are like average consumers. Not I don't not, know. Not, yeah, but I don't know how many average people own Bitcoin. Well, I think more. I think still the majority of people who own Bitcoin are are kind of. Uh, I don't know how you would say it. Uh, institutional investors, sorry. No, not just institution. Institutions don't buy buy it differently, but like people who have been in crypto for years, I doubt any of them, or I mean, not any of them, but majority of them keep their money in wallets. They don't keep it on the right. exchange. Okay, so so exactly. So they don't keep it on the exchange, which right. is the Coinbase. Is they move it to a wallet. Right. And, and and the thing is that back so the then, only, the only but back then you had different wallets for different currencies. Like yeah. you have Bitcoin, you need a specific wallet. You had Ethereum, you need maybe another wallet. And, yeah, you and, still do. Right. But exactly. you can. But most of the time, the wallet uh, provider or who, it depends if you have a software wallet, hardware wallet, whatever. But uh, they w most of them now accept multiple currencies. Now but yes, you have a different wallet, so to speak. It's like a different. Um, in layman's terms, it's like you have a different bank account for each currency. You can't have Ethereum and Bitcoin, right? But that's what in the, the name same is. way you couldn't have euros and dollars in the same bank account, you right? Know? But that's the same. That's the confusing thing because if I think of my digital wallet, I have a wallet with my money, and I can put in my in my wallet, I can put euros, I can put dollars. I can no, put you can't have a bank account with this with multiple. Not a currencies. bank account. I can have but my wallet. No, I put it in my pocket, so to speak. Yeah, you can have no, but you can have. So, like, if you have a, are we talking wallets or accounts? That's the thing because the name wallet is where it's confusing. I understand that I have okay. money in the I bank mean, and I put it in my wallet. Okay, so that's the exchange, that's the Coinbase. Yeah, and I'm then just I trying to, to my make it in layman's terms. Right, people do not keep their money in their wallet, their physical wallet. Okay, well, you might have some change, but you don't keep your life savings in your pocket. Okay, most people have bank these accounts. These days, with a little money you get on the yeah. bank, some okay. people have it under their pillows okay beautiful <laughs> uh, most people pillow. use accounts first of all most people don't own multiple currencies anyways most people just have their local currency but um yeah you so okay if you have an it's it's like if you have a a, a wallet provider um most of those wallet providers have multiple accept multiple currencies uh, let me ask you a particular wallet if i can interrupt you for a second uh one of them is jacks right mm -hmm. it's okay one of the more popular ones right um, that one does that one ac accept? Yeah, they accept a ton of different. Currencies. They accept now different yeah. currencies. You just have different, basically accounts within it, so to but speak. It, but when because you, open you can't send Bitcoin to an Ethereum wallet. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, yeah. Right, and but but all it is is if you have a Jax uh, um, wallet, like they use a, a phone app, then you just have basically different um, um, keys for each each wallet, and then one key gives you your Ethereum, one gives you your and you just have addresses. So if you just want to send money to your Bitcoin Jacks wallet, you just send to that address. Right. So so my point is that it's a little more complicated for the person that is not very slightly, but tech also savvy. You act the, yes. I mean, is it as simple as banking? Right. Right. No. But you you have to have a balance between uh, simplicity and, and simplicity and and, 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 the, and the freedom. Right. And the, yeah, the reason and, and why and to me the biggest. The biggest negative of of crypto is that if you move something to a wallet and you don't 
have your key, exactly, it's gone. Right, you're fucked. That's, that's done. But and, and I know people that but, have lost their money. But you also, I mean, if any any wallet you use will tell you fifty times when you sign up in big bold red letters. Oh yeah, never lose this key. It's yeah. not like they're they don't tell it's like you that, that the cigarette companies that right. tell you don't smoke, you're gonna die. But people yeah, do it. well, you know what? If you still smoke <laughs> and you die from lung cancer, you know you knew the risk. But no, these days you die of coronavirus, even if you have lung okay. cancer. Not the topic. That's um, <laughs> um, yeah. No, they tell you, they warn you in yes. advance. Yes, yes about the you. thing. But but still, I mean, okay. So it's so it's like it's no different than like okay. You can keep all your money in your mattress, but if you have a house fire and the money burns, you know it's gone. Sorry. No, no, I totally understand that. But the thing is that, now, as, you, as you can see, banks are still trying to get people to do banking online, especially more in these times. I mean, there I, are, the, now there are alternatives, though, I'll say. So if you don't want to do that, so the benefit of that is then you own it and there's no trusted third parties, which is the whole thing of Bitcoin, right? The whole thing is you do not have a trusted right. third you party. Don't, yeah. You don't need a middleman, an intermediary, or, nothing. Or a bank for that matter. Like right, you don't need anybody. You can own your own money. And if you want to give money to somebody else, you can send it directly peer to peer. You don't need a bank. You don't need to make a wire transfer, none of that. But if you, there, that's the positive of it. But if you don't want to do that, and, and lots of people don't want to do that for different reasons. Um, for example, lots of high net worth individuals use custodians. Yeah. Because the custodian is like a, a bank or a trust. It's not a bank. It's more like a trust. Um, and those custodians for a fee for a fee will hold your Bitcoin. But it means that if somebody, because because the other negative too is in the same way that if you just have a bunch of money in your wallet, in your pocket, and somebody comes up to you with a gun, says, give me your money. Okay, well, unless, I mean, hopefully you give them their money, but uh, you know, if not, you might get shot. It depends. Well, if it's only a punk, I'll just pick his ass. The negative side is, yeah, I mean, in theory, somebody could come and with a gun and be like, hey, give me right. your address, give me your key, basically to your Bitcoin wallet, right? Somebody could do that. Um, now, if you are not a super wealthy individual, you're probably not a high target, but if you're somebody who is gonna own many millions of Bitcoin, you wanna have protection, and that's what the custodians do. And then the- um, so, well, Do you know about approximately what the fee they charge for that? Um, it's not much. It's like a fund manager type yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a small fee, but yeah, okay. they, they charge that. But then, you know, then you have a trusted third party. Right. So that's right. the negative of it. And then the other the other like institutions, obviously, uh, they do it in many different ways. And there's actually lots of startups and, and companies that are trying to specifically help institutions to make uh, institutional solutions um, for cryptocurrency. So different companies do it different ways. There's Bitcoin ETFs, which I think are kind of bullshit, but lots of people use them. I was going to ask you, there's, there's ETFs, right? But yep. they, they're just Bitcoins or crypto in general? Like you can have a basket. Uh, there's Bitcoin. There's, I think there's Ethereum ETFs. Um, but they're not combined. They're not like a crypto ETF. Not that I'm aware that of. They say we, we... I mean, there might be. I don't know. But okay. for the most part... People just buy like if you want to go on. Um, but why do you think it's not good? Because it's 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 not. You you take it as an investment per se. If yeah, but about it's it. not. It's you don't own the Bitcoin. You're relying on. Well, yeah, but it's whoever the same your thing. broker is. But basically. what's the difference between that and I? I uh, make another comparison again that you don't like. But what's the difference between that and an ETF, a gold ETF, where you the have gold different... ETF has the same vulnerability. Right, right. You I, have different miners. I have a gold trust. Right, when I invest in gold, I don't own physical gold. I don't have the means to do it because I don't want to have a fucking vault and worry about that. So as of right now, I own gold, but I own it through a gold trust. But what's it called? A trust. I'm trusting. Now, obviously. So I that invest, would be like a custodian? Yeah, basically. I invest with a massive gold trust that owns billions and billions of dollars worth of gold and manages people who are way wealthier than I am. But I, I, I have my money with them for my gold holdings. So, and I am trusting them and I pay them a small fee for that. I understand the risk. In my situation, it's okay. I'm willing, I'm okay with the risk and right, I understand. But, but, but preferably, I would own my own physical gold. I just don't have the means Right, what was the difference between that and the, basically the, uh, the uh, crypto, basically, crypto it's, trust? It's basically the same thing. Okay. I mean, the, e the ETFs, I would, custodian is different. Custodian is fine. Listen, if I was worth $100 million and I wanted to buy millions worth of Bitcoin, I'd probably use a custodian too, 
you know, um, the ETFs are different because the ETFs have like some of them aren't even fully correlated to Bitcoin um, mm -hmm. and they don't even move the same as Bitcoin does. And it's I, I wouldn't buy a Bitcoin ETF. Definitely not. OK. All right. So like interactive brokers has a Bitcoin ETF, but it's only like 92 percent correlated, which is terrible. How come not? <clears throat> what is, why is that? Um, because of the way they manage it. Um, and, but you, but the whole point of Bitcoin or any of these currencies is that you own it and the ETFs, you don't own any Bitcoin, right? You own an ETF, which means nothing, it's just a piece of paper. And you're trusting the interactive brokers is not going to get hacked or is not going to go out of business or any of those things. All right. So, so back to the, to the wallet functionality. So I can have a, let's just stick to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Jax. And so with Jax, I can have all my crypto, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any other one in my Jax wallet, I just need different keys to move one, move the other. Is yeah. that how it works? Okay. And those keys are one-time keys. That is just your <clears throat> password, so to speak, to get there yeah. for each of them. And that's the one that you cannot lose at all, whatever no, it is. It's not recoverable because they don't, basically what Jax does, <clears throat> for Jax, people could look it up, but it's basically, it's one of the more popular wallets. It's, it's, a, it's a phone app wallet, but the right. benefit of it is that it um um they don't everything's stored locally mm -hmm. so it's stored on your phone they don't have like a database right so it cannot keys. be hacked because they're not responsible they pass it on to right. you right it's the same as um um like if anybody uses the google authenticator right that's local on your device that's not on a google database somewhere that could be hacked that's the point of it so i, I guess the uh the uh vulnerability is that you need to save that those keys and everything somewhere yes. And then it puts the onus on you to save it somewhere. It's like, okay, you're going to have it on a little piece of paper in your wallet or something. It's like, obviously it's not. I wouldn't do it like that, but you could do it like that. <laughs> well, well, first of all, those keys are like a string of al alphanumeric number keys on uh, characters, basically. It's very hard to retype. So normally you want to have it somewhere that is you can copy and paste maybe, or that's also a good thing. I mean, you're not going to memorize the key. Unless you're some fucking genius some, like some you. Some people do. I know. <laughs> some people do. 